It's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, skincare nerd and chemistry PhD. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know I love talking about ingredients and science, and a lot of you guys have been asking me to talk about silicones in particular. So I'm really happy that Grant Industries asked me to do a sponsored video all about silicones. Grant Industries is an ingredient manufacturer who make a bunch of cosmetic ingredients including Grant Active Retinoid, physical sunscreens, and of course, silicones. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what silicones are, what they do, and we're going to bust some myths about silicones that you've probably seen around the internet. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. First up, what is a silicone? Silicones are organosiloxanes, which contain alternating silicon-oxygen silicon bonded to carbon atoms. Silicones originally come from sand, which is silicon dioxide. There are a few different types of silicones which have different properties and uses. To spot a silicone in your product, look for names that end in cone, canole, or siloxane. Ingredients that end in silane usually aren't silicones because they don't have enough silicon, and they have slightly different properties. In the realm of silicones, there are small silicones, which tend to be very liquid, and they're often volatile, which means they evaporate and they don't stay on your hair or skin. This category includes phenyl trimethicone, which is really small, and cyclopentasiloxane, which is a small volatile cyclic silicone. There are also silicone polymers, which are long chain molecules made up of repeating siloxane units. These can be liquid or solid, for example, dimethicone, proper name polydimethylsiloxane, and polymethylsilsesquioxane. You can also get functionalized silicones like amodimethicone and dimethiconol, which have a few other atoms on their structures, which give them special properties on top of what regular silicones do. Silicones are everywhere in beauty products. They've been used and researched since the 1950s. There's a good reason silicones are so popular. They have some really cool properties that other ingredients just don't have. A lot of this comes from the fact that silicones are really unreactive ingredients with a really smooth glide. They're also cruelty-free and vegan. In skincare, silicones are hypoallergenic, non-irritating, and non-comedogenic. They're good moisturizers and they help products spread on your skin. They can actually enhance the penetration of active ingredients and protect them from degrading before you apply them. Waterproofing silicones can be used in sunscreens to help them stay on while you swim, and they can also be used to coat mineral sunscreen particles to stop them from clumping and to reduce the free radicals that form when they get exposed to sunlight. You can also use silicones to protect your skin from wind and chafing. In makeup, silicones are great because they glide onto your skin, and that means that your makeup blends in much more easily. In makeup primers, they can also fill in lines and pores, making your skin look plumper and less wrinkly, and it gives you a smooth canvas for the rest of your makeup. There are also silicones that prolong the wear time of makeup, which means that it's really good for keeping foundations and lipsticks stuck to your skin, while still being flexible enough that it won't crack. Silicones can also have a matte look that can blur light, and this makes your skin look more airbrushed. When they're in hair care products, silicones smooth out hair, detangle it, and make it shinier. Plus, they protect your hair from heat styling and humidity. They can also help hair dye stay on for longer. So if silicones are so great, why are there so many myths about them? Like with a lot of other beauty topics online, you'll see myths that have no basis in reality, and you have myths that start with a grain of truth and quickly mutate into something else entirely. Silicones are synthetic and not natural. This is true, and coupled with the fact that they're so popular, I think this is the main reason there's so many myths about silicones. I've covered the topic of synthetic and natural in an earlier video. Us humans have a bias towards thinking that natural is better, safer, more environmentally friendly, and etc. But this just isn't true. Natural does not mean safer. Synthetic does not mean more dangerous for you or the environment. The most toxic substances in the world are natural. In beauty products, natural plant extracts are some of the ingredients that cause the most irritation and allergic reactions. When we use natural products, sometimes it's incredibly destructive to the environment. Things like palm oil, sandalwood, ivory, and shark's fin. You can check out my video on natural versus synthetic if you want more details. So the word natural doesn't mean very much. So let's ignore the natural part and we'll focus on the real issues instead. This is the perception that natural things are safer for your body in terms of health and better for the environment, and therefore the myths that silicones are not good for your health and not good for the environment. Silicones are bad for sensitive skin. This isn't true, and in fact it's the opposite. Silicones are frequently used in medicine because they're so hypoallergenic and dimethicone is actually an FDA-approved skin protectant. Most people can put undiluted dimethicone on their skin with no issues. 
silicones are toxic to human health. This is another one of those myths that grew from the whole natural is better notion. Silicones are actually really safe. They haven't been linked to cancer or hormone disruption or any other long-term health effects, and regulatory authorities around the world have said that they're not a risk to humans. Silicones are used in lots of medicated treatments like ointments and creams, and even inside the body in medical devices like pacemakers and hydrocephalic shunts in the brain. Silicones are also found in anti-farting oral medication, where it breaks up gas bubbles. Silicones suffocate your skin and cause acne. A lot of the logic for why silicones are bad comes from the idea that they form a solid occlusive film on your skin. For example, you'll often see that silicones are described like a layer of rubber, or that they trap dirt and germs in your pores like plastic wrap. Supposedly this film interferes with your skin's natural processes, so it can't exfoliate, sweat, regulate its temperature, or produce cells properly. But this isn't the case, and it's hard to work out where these myths come from other than just speculation. There's zero research that shows any of this. Silicones actually form a breathable layer on your skin. It's permeable to oxygen and water vapour, and this is actually a problem when silicone rubber is used in equipment. It can't actually form a gas-tight seal. Oxygen and water molecules can actually wiggle out in between the flexible siloxane chains in the silicone film. Silicones also aren't very comedogenic according to standard tests. Dimethicone has a rating of 1, cyclomethicone has a rating of 0. Any ingredient can clog your pores, and silicones are the same as any other ingredient in this regard. You can find out more about comedogenicity ratings in my video on that. If you've used some products in the past and you've concluded that silicones are problematic for you, keep this in mind. Lots of people will get breakouts from products and look for ingredients that are common in their ingredient lists, and if they see dimethicone or other silicones, they might blame that. But silicones are incredibly common, and they're some of the most common ingredients after water. And since so many products have silicones, somewhere around half of all skincare products have them. The chance of seeing them as ingredients in products that break you out is super high, even if they're not actually the cause. There's also a perception that because silicones are used for longwear products, they're hard to remove from your skin at the end of the day, and they might build up over time on your skin. But it's really hard to make anything occlusive that stays on forever, because you shed one layer of skin cells a day. A buildup of silicone or anything else on your skin just doesn't happen. Silicones just make your skin look nice, but they don't actually do anything or they make your skin worse. This myth is mostly talking about dimethicone in skincare. And there's a similar myth for petrolatum or petroleum jelly. It's that it forms an impenetrable occlusive film on your skin that dries out your skin and makes it dehydrated. But apart from the fact that water can actually pass through silicone films, there are some studies that also show that silicones can improve your skin. In one study, 2% silicone in a cream led to greater skin hydration and lower transepidermal water loss than cream alone. Another study found that transepidermal water loss wasn't affected, which means it wasn't occlusive and it didn't moisturize, so it really depends on the formulation. Also keep in mind that dimethicone is an FDA-listed skin protectant. Actives can't get through silicones. Silicones aren't very occlusive, and the film that they form breaks down over time. Silicones are actually used to deliver active ingredients in pharmaceuticals, and petroleum jelly, which is much more occlusive, is used for this as well. So yes, active ingredients can get through silicone films, and it won't build up on your skin, even though within your skincare routine, it might make more sense to layer it over other ingredients if you want more immediate effects. Silicones do nothing for your hair except coat it and make it look shiny. It's true that silicones form a shiny coating on your hair, but this is a good thing. Hiding damage is actually good. Hair is pretty fragile, and if your hair is damaged, it tends to snag more, which just leads to more damage. Smoothing out your hair is good. It stops cuticle scales from snapping off, which is what happens when you feel friction when you comb your hair. And it can also make your hair stronger and more resistant to breakage. Silicones also protect your hair from heat when you dry or curl or straighten it. So they're great at protecting your hair from damage, which is definitely doing something for your hair. There is one potential issue here though. Hairdressers tend to hate silicones because they stay in your hair and it stops treatments from getting through to your hair. So colouring and perming might not turn out as predicted. So the solution to this is pretty easy. Just use a clarifying treatment before you go to the hairdresser and stop using silicones for a few days before you go. Silicones stay on your hair and weigh it down. This can be the case for some people with particular silicones. Different people have different hair needs. Not all silicones are the same, and this same concept applies to other hair ingredients too, like oils and fatty alcohols. For example, before I bleached my hair, I found that dimethicone was fantastic for my hair, 
But after bleaching, sometimes it can feel a bit heavy, but amodimethicone is amazing. Amodimethicone is a specially functionalized silicone that selectively binds to damaged hair. It avoids building up and it lasts through a few washes. It wasn't heavy enough for my hair before I dyed it, but now it's perfect for targeting damage. Silicones are non-biodegradable and toxic for the environment. It's technically true that silicones aren't really biodegradable, but it's important to note that this doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Biodegradable means that it can be broken down by living things like bacteria. But non-biodegradable doesn't mean that something is bad. For example, glass is non-biodegradable, but it's inert and non-toxic, and so therefore it's not a big issue. Silicones, on the other hand, aren't biodegradable, but they do degrade in the environment, and they turn back into silica, which is sand, carbon dioxide and water. For example, dimethicone is non-biodegradable, but it's mostly removed when wastewater is treated. It degrades in contact with clays. It's not water soluble, so it probably ends up in the clays as well. So it does degrade, it's just not biodegradable. A lot of silicones also evaporate into the air and they degrade there when they meet UV in sunlight and oxygen in the air. For most cyclic silicones used in beauty products, half will break down in two weeks. In soil and sediment, they break down in less than two years. This is relatively persistent from an environmental chemistry standpoint, but it's actually really quick compared to the things that we think of as non-biodegradable, like plastics, which take thousands of years to break down. It's also worth noting that the concentrations of silicones around the world in the environment are really low, even though we've been using them for a long time, and this suggests that they're not really building up in the environment. The other issue is environmental toxicity. So are the silicones doing anything while they're hanging around for up to two years? Most authorities around the world think that silicones are of little concern because there are such low concentrations in the environment and they're not very soluble in water. The only region which has limits on silicones at the moment is the EU, which limits D4 and D5. This is because Europe uses the precautionary principle in their environmental regulation, which means that they don't really look at the environmental evidence when making safety assessments, they only look at laboratory studies. So at the moment, with what we know, it doesn't look like silicones are likely to be an environmental problem. Although, of course, if new evidence comes up, we'll need to revisit this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and you can also subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lab Muffin Beauty Science and check out my blog for more nerding out. See you next time.